So yeah, I got some awesome people from here and from all over the world to share their views and thoughts and suggestions about our topic, sustainable tourism. Why me? What now? Because honestly, we believe that only with you, young people from Albania, the Balkans, from all over the world, we have the keys to a good future. So let's go. And here is some blue sky from the Azores to start with. We are starting uh, with the CEO of the Global Sustainable Tourism Council, Randy Durbin. And my first question, a question for you would be like, could you explain us the concept of sustainable tourism in short words? And why is GSTC needed in that? Okay, it's hard to do it shortly, but I'll try. <laughs> so sustainable tourism means that we look at all of tourism, all of travel and tourism, and find ways to make all aspects of it more sustainable. And that's also including the concept of more responsible because it's make, take the good positive elements of tourism and keep doing the good pieces mm -hmm. without, but avoid the harmful effects of tourism because tourism can cause harm, it can cause degradation of uh, environments and cultural sites if they're too over abused and not protected. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of carbon emissions and other greenhouse gases associated with transport and other aspects of it. So it's talking about the totality of the travel and tourism mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. and making sure that all the components are operating as sustainably and as responsibly as possible. Mm -hmm. GSTC's role, uh, a few different elements. Primarily, first and foremost, is that we're, we, we've developed and managed global baseline standards. Mm -hmm. that we're kind of alone in terms of being recognized as the keeper of one set of standards. We were created by uh, our founders coming from uh, two UN agencies working with the conservation community. So we're kind of alone in that space um, by design mm -hmm. to create a, 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 stand, a set of standards that uh, are globally recognized and used. And then the reason that's important is that uh, travel and tourism has such complex supply chains. There's so many pieces to it. It's a very complex business. And so when we talk about sustainability in travel and tourism, it's very complex. And so to have the broad definition, we need a set of standards. We provide um, you know, that set of standards that describe what is sustainable tourism in much detail. So mm -hmm. we play an important role in doing that. Right, and um, um, I can from here also send a good message that these criteria which the world is using are now also translated to Albanian language and to all our Western Balkan languages. So we can start using them as businesses or as destinations or as um, you know individual supporters of sustainable development. So that's a good message from here. Thank you for that. Um, um, why would you see um, sustainable tourism and innovation parts as, as good ones for a young pe person from the Balkans to follow? Yeah, I would especially focus on the word innovation mm -hmm. um, because when you look at just you know jobs that are just purely about sustainability, there aren't so many. There's a few. Um, progressive companies want a sustainability manager, but everybody needs, and where the world is going is that we you know we need innovation. We need better and better software. We need better and better technological solutions, hardware and software, to manage visitor flows, to create ever better visitor experiences in a crowded world, at crowded sites, mm -hmm. um, and find the interesting and you know sharing information. And, and there's just so many pieces of experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's sort of a never-ending opportunity to find new ways to make the experience better for the visitor and more efficiently operated for travel companies. So yeah. innovation has tremendous opportunities for creativity and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. innovation. And to serve your communities as well. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Right. Um, at the same time with us, there has been in Madrid the, the um, conference on climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, ha, well, we come here from 42 countries, 250 uh, persons flying in, etc. What do you think? What should be the future of travel? Well, travel and tourism faces a bit of a risk because we are so dependent upon aviation. And aviation is, at the moment, still very much dependent upon fossil fuels. 
And whereas other industries are getting cleaner and all of human life needs to be cleaner. I mean, we've obviously got a problem, big problem with climate change. So we have to transform to clean energy solutions. But at the moment, aviation remains dependent upon jet fuel being you know, carbon based. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's a problem. However, everything else we do can operate on clean energy. Everything we do on land can operate on clean energy. Mm-hmm. You know, the price of electric vehicles has come down so dramatically it will continue to come down as production quantities go up. Mm-hmm. So we can have cleaner land transport, we already do. We could have more, uh, more clean, well, more sustainable running hotels. Everything we do on land mm-hmm. is getting much cleaner and can be much cleaner. So we've got two things going on. The land mm-hmm. portion, yep. Uh, has great opportunity to be super clean, whereas we've got a problem on the on the aviation side. Yeah. But in terms of land transport, we've got to move more to high-speed rail yeah. that can run on cleaner electricity and so forth. And then hope that technology will support aviation to run on cleaner fuels. Right. But uh, in the meantime, we have to figure that out, that, you know, should we travel less? There's a lot of us, myself included, that believe we mm-hmm. should focus more on slow travel concept where we travel less often but for longer stays and aggregate our trip whether it's business or leisure do more for a longer trip and travel less so we burn more carbon emissions but we but let's keep traveling yeah and stay longer and stay longer and bring the good uh, impacts to the local communities etc and then maximize good impacts also yeah and we and we don't have to feel shame about every flight we take we should feel shame if we take you know, too many. Yeah, and know, too short. So, too short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, right. and, and question ourselves for the necessity of the short yeah, trip. Yeah. So the travelers aren't, aren't the bad guys. It is the system that needs to change, and we are on a good way of doing exactly that. <laughs> Who's the good guys yeah. and the bad guys? <laughs> well, you know, all of humanity is bad in the sense that, come on, we can all do better. Yeah. You know, so at individual level or business level or government, we can all do better. Yeah. And we should do much better, faster. Yeah. Yeah. The world yeah. is clearly in peril on many levels, mm. so we need to take more action faster. Yeah. So, no really true good guys or bad guys, yeah. but we can all do much better. Yeah, with a lot of accountability in it. Yeah. Thank you so much, oh, my Randy. Thank you. You're very welcome. Great message to Albania. <laughs> See you pleasure. there. Hopefully soon. I look forward to it. Good morning. Uh, Today I'm talking with Ayako. She's the um, uh, training director of the Global Sustainable Tourism Council. And my first question to you is, um, how long have you been doing these trainings and what has been your experience? Thank you. I started with the GSTC with our sustainable tourism training program four years ago Um, and I've been fortunate to be involved in working with stakeholders and professionals from around the world in many kinds of uh, training sessions and learning opportunities and I find that the experiences that we bring by people sharing their knowledge and examples and ideas with each other is a key part of the value that we have in in the training experiences and I I really appreciate the the exchange that we bring from our training program. I can confirm that because I was uh, participating in one of your trainings online uh, earlier this year and took the exam as well, which was demanding enough. Let's look at innovation and digitalization and sustainable tourism. Um, are there special chances for young people, you know, from the Balkans or elsewhere? Like, are there special chances which we're we're not there yet, like in today's world? I think that sustainable tourism absolutely needs to be focused on innovation more now more than 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 ever, and I do think that with the development of technology nowadays and the access that we have, the opportunities that, that, that we have, I, I do think that there are more diverse mm-hmm. opportunities for, for us and for younger generations to be thinking about ways how we can interact with tourism. How can we, what does it mean to be working in tourism is not the same as what it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So we have the chance to define and maybe redefine tourism and sustainable tourism and how what we, we work with them. So I hope that our younger generations will be innovative 
in, in, in bringing new ideas to this field of sustainable tourism. Yeah, I, I can't agree more because uh, this conference, uh, first youth uh, conference in Albania is actually tackling exactly these things like, like innovation and, and digital, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we will get some good synergies going. Um, could we get you soon to Albania to give trainings to the young people? I really do hope so. And I, I, I think that we should bring together engaged, excited young people interested in tourism to come together to, to, to create this, this push that's needed to bring sustainable tourism more forward and, and, and to, to be more priority in, in the country and the, and the region. And I, I hope that we'll be able to play a role in supporting the process by sharing knowledge. There's, there's a lot of knowledge and experiences in within our organization and within our wider network globally that we can share um, to, to support this process. And I hope that we'll be able to do that through our training program. So I really um, invite you to, <laughs> to stay in touch and, and, and hopefully we will see you in Albania. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving this message directly to the Elbasan University and all the training um, responsibles in, in the country and also the host Elita Travel. Invite this lady to give a train to train a program and you can disseminate the knowledge like in a, in a fast and a good way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm glad to talk today with um, Dr. Yanis Papas. He's from Greece and he's the director of the GSDC Mediterranean region. Yanis, um, we have seen some excellent examples here at the GSDC conference about sustainability policies and how countries and, and businesses live by them. What would be your suggestion for Albania to start doing the same? I think number one, uh, it should be to create our vision. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think every country, doesn't matter if it is Albania, Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, mm -hmm. has, they have to create a vision. And uh, based on that vision, they have to find a way to manage and find the targets. Yeah. So I think the good practices are, are there, are mm -hmm. waiting for us. Uh, it should be more suitable for the countries that we're discussing every time. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more important to find a vision. This is something that we are finding not only in a, in a national, uh, let's say, level, but also in uh, regional mm -hmm. or even local. Right. Vision right. is number one. Right, right. And I would love to add to that that I would love to see every tree have roots. So the hmm. roots can be the young people um, who start to work, hopefully, in sustainable tourism more and more in the future. Mm -hmm. um, Albania and Greece are, are neighboring countries. Where, yeah. What kind of um, uh, possibilities, opportunities are there in this context? Albania as a candidate country, Greece already in the EU, cross-border, yeah. etc. Yeah, I, I think uh, the beauty of the environment, I mean the national environment, the biodiversity that we have in our borders, I think it's, it's a great place for someone to go and see and attract people, visitors to go there, but for sure uh, the infrastructure is number one. Mm -hmm. It's number one for that, and uh, there are a lot of grants over there. I mean, European grants, uh, transnational grants that can help on that uh, direction. Mm -hmm. uh, also, everything that related with uh, not only biodiversity but also to create a complete and integrated packages of visiting places that are very green, but also mm -hmm. they have some uh, history behind. Mm -hmm. Also, there is a lot of history in, in, trans, in transnational mm -hmm. borders. Right. Uh, so I think these two things are very, very important. But uh, in order to do that, I think it's very important to, to create awareness mm -hmm. of the people, of the locals mm -hmm. that are over there in order to help all the people, I mean, the, the, the young people that would like to create based on innovation, mm -hmm. some nice things, some nice, uh, let's say, businesses, mm -hmm. is going to be number one in the future. And this mm -hmm. is not only Albania and Greek, uh, let's say, borders, everyone, yeah, the same thing. The same thing right, yeah. right. What would be your advice to a person who is now sitting in the audience yeah. and, and thinking like, okay, where should I start? Mm. First of all, I think she or he uh, should think about what I am very strong on in, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So, and then, what will be my vision of uh, development, my personal development? Mm -hmm. Because there are so many opportunities over there about uh, going and create a new business or 
let's say work together with other people because mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. we, we had today tourism is based on cooperation right. so we have to see startups spin-offs uh, ideas that can be uh, let's say finally a very good business mm -hmm. related with sustainability of course because sustainability it's, it's a, for me it's a basic trend mm -hmm. mainstream also yes. maybe in the next yeah, five yeah. to ten years so this is the one I mean vision innovation the, the third one is training yeah yeah, so right. if you don't train yourself, if you mm -hmm. not uh, let's say invest on that, mm -hmm. uh, there is no way to, to do many things. I mean, it's right. a very competitive market. Go get educated first, yeah. and and I hope that from Elbasan. Um, um, as a municipality and from the businesses there, there will be good, good, good directions um, to go. Okay, thank you very much. Now some thank more uh, lovely uh -huh. trees and birds and blue sky. Um, I have now here someone from Switzerland and I'd like to ask you first who you are and, and what you do and what brought you to this conference. Sure, I'm Alex. I'm the founder of FIA Voyage and we are building a sustainable travel platform. Mm -hmm. What oh. is the name of the company? Just it's slowly. FIA Voyage. All oh, right. FIA Voyage. Oh, okay, Voyage, we'll, yes. give, we'll get, give that link. <laughs> okay, good. FIA Voyage, yes. We are building a sustainable travel platform. Uh -huh. Our idea, our model is to make it easy for travelers to book multi day trips mm -hmm. in Africa and mid and lower income countries. Mm -hmm. And the way we are doing it by building one central platform that only promotes independently verified, mm -hmm. sustainable tour companies. All right. Good. So we want to make sustainable travel easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it addressing uh, individuals or also businesses? Like is it B2C or we B2C? We started B2C. We are now thinking yeah. of a B2B model, but okay. B2C is our focus. We want to have an impact. We want to encourage more sustainable travel. Yeah. And we believe that the only way to do this is if we can go mass market with consumers. That's right. where the power sits. Right, right. Now, what would you do if you put yourself in the shoes of, an, of a young Albanian person and who is seemingly in a, in a perspective Perspectiveless situation and not 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 knowing what to do and how to get forward. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, I would recommend think for yourself. What mm -hmm. is the future you want to see? What mm -hmm. is important to you? How would you like our world to be? In what world would you want to live? Mm -hmm. And if your surroundings, your family, your friends, your schooling, your government doesn't give you the answer. Find the answer in yourself. Find your own truth, mm -hmm. and then go and make it happen. <laughs> yeah, find find the right partners probably find the and right, partners. right supporters. And nowadays, I believe this yeah. this conference is having a bunch of them. Okay. Absolutely yes. And nowadays you find a lot of resources online. Mm -hmm. You can connect with people online. Go out there, connect, find the right people all mm -hmm. over the world, mm -hmm. and connect mm -hmm. with on online. They mm -hmm. are there. Find your support group. Find the people who think like yeah. you. Um, and yes, you can go to conferences like this one yeah. to meet those people yeah. face to face. Yeah, and if you can't go to the conference, I, I agree on the networking yes. perspective. Like that is today the key that we didn't have before. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Let's Thank you. Let's continue to the conference. Sure. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Ciao. Um, so, Roy, um, you are managing this global organization and um, advocating for more sustainability in tourism and also this global conference here. Uh, what took you to this job, personally? Um, well, I would say that I first started uh, with something that I was passionate about, which actually it was elephants. Oh! That what more what's the first thing that brought me into sustainable tourism okay. uh, through a research that I did while I was doing my bachelor degree mm -hmm. um, and at that time I found that there can be a relationship between conservation of elephants yeah. and, um, and financial um, and economic development mm -hmm. in developing mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so from that time I decided that that's the method I'm going to pursue okay. issues related to sustainability in tourism yeah, yeah. Um, and and what I did is I continued my studies, but I must say I actually never studied tourism in my, yeah. my higher education. Yeah. So what I did is um, 
I was actually studying some other aspects, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. political science, mm -hmm. my, my, my master degree was in economics, so every time I touched some other things, yes, yes, uh, yes. and through that I actually went and used them mm -hmm. into, in tourism. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, how would you suggest, if you put yourselves into the shoes of a young person in Albania, uh, how would you suggest uh, that he or she should start a career in sustainable tourism? Um, I would say this, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, there is, if you're if you're already studying any aspect, if you're doing pursuing a, a degree in tourism, that's fine. But you should probably find a way to focus um, mm -hmm. and to be an expert with something. Yeah. You don't have to be just an expert with one thing. You can learn yeah. many many things yeah. and be yeah. and learn expertise in them. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not studying tourism, that's fine. Yeah, it Find could be own. like biology or... Exactly. Many of yeah. the people around mm -hmm. here, the conference yeah. that we're mm -hmm. having right now, they share with me, I actually studied biology, mm -hmm. I actually studied economics, I Geography. actually studied yeah. engineering. Yes, We've been yes, sitting yes. with, uh, uh -huh. with uh, you have Ioannis, uh, also he's an engineer. Yes, that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. It, you, I think that the best way is to actually accumulate knowledge and experience mm -hmm. with some other aspects yes. rather than mm -hmm. just the tourism. aspect of tourism. I agree, I agree. So like a diverse, diverse uh, experience. Exactly, uh, case of, exactly. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, now we are here from 42 countries, 250 people come together and we all had to fly here. Um, how does this conference tackle this issue, you know, carbon footprint and and sustainability all together as, as mm. an event, um, plastic waste, etc. Is that a problem here, or how do we how do we solve it for this special event? No? Well, the question about carbon carbon footprint in events is is something that is uh, related to all the other aspects of the sustainability mm -hmm. aspects of an event um, that includes the usage of plastic. That I think you showed a few photos that. You didn't see any yeah, single-use single right. plastic. No, no. And we, it's been it's been really good. I can I can confirm Let's that. Let's go back yes. to the carbon footprint. Okay. Like our flies. I mean, the flies yes. have been. The, I mean. Because, so yeah, the yeah. issue of flies is one aspect of of, of uh, the environmental impact that we have when we speak about conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be also plastic, paper, and uh, other social issues mm -hmm. and others. But we're going to focus now only on the question of carbon footprint because mm -hmm. this is something that many people in Europe are speaking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we are worried about it, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In short, I think that on the one hand, um, we should be more attentive mm -hmm. to the possibilities where we, if it is possible not to fly, mm -hmm. then it might yeah. be better. Yeah. But Reduce in situations flying. where that is the only mean of transportation, mm -hmm. I find it a little bit difficult to to say, don't fly. No, no, uh, I know, but this is also not the message from right. here. That's what I've understood, but like offsetting would be a must from my point of view. Exactly, so yeah. there are other, other things that we can do. Um, one would be is identify if you if you if you do decide that you do want to reduce your flight mm -hmm. amount, then just identify where you want to go to yeah. and and do that if it's if it's if it's um, worth the time. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that we recommend is to just extend your stay. Mm -hmm. I personally, mm -hmm. I I come from Asia for this conference, mm -hmm. and I'm saved. I've saved some of my vacation days. So if That's I already right. came to Europe, I'm going to spend some time here mm -hmm. before I go back home. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that there are some other actions that can be done, such as carbon offsetting. Mm -hmm. That's something that any individual can do, mm -hmm. or the organizers of the event. Yeah. With the organizers of the event do it, there is a, there is a benefit because one, it show that it's, it makes it much easier to to estimate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they can never be a very very accurate mm -hmm. um, calculation. That's why we prefer the term estimation of how mm -hmm. much carbon carbon emission we produce mm -hmm. and then they can they can uh, lead the offsetting mm -hmm. offsetting carbon is usually some activities that come um, um, that the these activities are equivalent um, in the amount of collection of carbon mm -hmm. compared to the carbon that has been emitted through 
let's say the event. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you, Roy. This has sure. been a uh, yeah, good a short talk, and, and um, I heard that next year we will be in Canada with this that event true. in an awesome place called. The, the, so the next year, the GSTC 2020 will be in November in mm -hmm. Thompson Okanagan, yeah. uh, and that's a region within British Columbia in Canada. Yeah, and uh, awarded many times for its truly good sustainability policy. So I found I found it here very very um, good so far that um, uh, we actually experience sustainability policies in practice with the businesses, with the organisation. Um, with the destination altogether. So thank you so much for a good choice. Yeah. I do want to add a comment. <laughs> please, please. So when we have all these 250 people that come mm -hmm. and attend, uh, come, mm -hmm. fly in to a mm -hmm. destination and see what is being going on, mm -hmm. sometimes it's nice to see it as an example somewhere on a PPT or, or a video or whatever. Yeah. But sometimes when you see it, in your eyes, yeah. when you feel it, when you, when you taste it, if it's the local yeah. food that we've had, yeah. it really makes some transformation in our mindset yeah. and experiences. And we've yeah. seen that many participants later on yeah. take these things that they've seen and learned. Yeah, and bring them back home. And we had here also a PhD student who uh, is from Elbasan, but she lives in the United States. So <laughs> we'll introduce her to you as well. Thank you, Roy. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, these were our personal and professional regards from Terceira Island to Elbasan. And I would conclude sustainability is becoming the competitive advantage in business, not only in tourism. So if you follow the green innovation paths, Albania as a country, the Balkans as a region, and you personally will be successful. I'm wishing you a great rest of the conference and hoping to see you next year in Albania. Bye-bye.